run Barter Town? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Mad Mag Beyond Thunderdome. I hate not saying the. It's like when British people say, have you gone to univer... Uh, 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 or you go... What do they say? He's gone to hospital. Not to the hospital. Yeah, right. He's gone to university. <laughs> it's not... You, you say Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I guess the is superfluous. Superfluous, superfluous there. I don't know. But here we are. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is not as good as the first two movies. <laughs> or the fourth movie, for that matter. And probably not the fifth by the time we see it. And cover it next week. Don't miss it. We're coming at you. Yeah. I'm joined by Scott, my dear friend and co-host, oh. and my lovely wife, Masha. My lovely wife and co-host. <laughs> we got a bunch of shit to get to today. Um, we're going to be talking about this movie quite a bit. I have a lot of thoughts on Mad Max beyond Thunderdome. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about this movie. Uh, our listeners had a lot of thoughts about them. Probably too many, if I'm being honest, but that's awesome. We love the participation, so thank you. Additionally, I have an email to get to from one of our listeners. Um, sometimes we get emails. You can email the show, hosts at libertystreetgeek.net. That's hosts at libertystreetgeek.net. And even if it's for something after the fact, you can still send it in and we'll, maybe we'll read it. So that's probably what I'm going to do at some point. He talks a lot about this. I'll think he's from Australia, which is cool. Sweet. He's got some opinions, some thoughts. And um, we got a review recently, a three star. <laughs> three star is the worst kind of review. One star is great and five star is great. If you get a one star review, people just hate your fucking guts and they're not for you. And that's okay. If you get too many one stars, then you're probably doing something wrong. But a three star is like, meh, you know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't normally, I, I usually would always read bad reviews. I kind of prided myself on them. Um, and I don't want to belabor the show too much because I want to just get to the content here. But I do, I do in fact, want to talk about this review because um, not that it matters if people listen to it, read it and don't listen. I don't really care. Um, I mean, I care. I want listeners, but I'm not going to, you know, I, I want to address what I think this person thinks is salient points. And um Address them as professionally as possible, just because of some of the changes to our programming, the way we are um, increasing what we give to our members and decreasing what we give for free. That's how I like to look at it. Um, giving more to the people who pay us and giving a little bit less to those who don't, but still giving those that don't pay us lots of free content. He took exception to uh, paywalling the way we were, so I want to talk about it. Because, um, but, but not till the break. So I'm going to wait for that. We're going to, we want to dive into the fucking wasteland. I got a new band, go. Scott, called Grudgehead Pigneck and the Mohawk Boys, featuring Meaty All Phil right. Collins. <laughs> Meaty Phil Collins <laughs> filling in. <laughs> and the first song is called Bust the Deal, Face the Wheel. They're going to be touring yeah. this summer at a place near you. So get your tickets for Grudgehead Pigneck and the Mohawk Boys, featuring Meaty Phil Collins. That's going to be fun. I hope they fight at Fenway. <laughs> yeah. You can stick them all in a Thunderdome and just watch what happens. Ugh, I hope. I think Grudgehead's going to yeah. win that fight, despite being vertically challenged. I think it's what you're supposed to say now. Well, he seems to survive everything. That's true. Yeah, he does so. survive a head-on with a train and a vehicle and an explosion. Yes. <laughs> in the Looney Tunes fashion. Dude, the, uh, I don't know. So I didn't remember this movie at all. There's that. Number two. Okay. I think um, I think most of the positive discussion of this podcast is going to be in the first half of the show, and most of the negative discussion is going to be in the second half of the show. So there you go, members. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for supporting us. We do appreciate it. But um, yeah, so I am. I'm really. I'm really pumped to dive into this thing. It's been a while, but. Uh, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm sitting down watching this movie. I'm about 40 minutes into it, and I say to myself, this movie's fucking sick. I, I definitely yeah. don't remember this movie the way I thought I did. I definitely do not remember this movie. I, I didn't remember the movie. What was different? The last hour, with the exception of the very- oh, You don't remember? It's, it's kind of a shit sandwich. You know, okay. It's a, okay. It's it's yummy and then shitty and then a little bit yummy again. This movie, okay. Um, versus Mad Max and of course the Road Warrior. Um, but there is it is thought provoking. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, I watched an interview with George Miller and Mel Gibson at the time, which is really cool. And uh, 
yeah, so, yeah, there's a lot to talk about, but this is um, a fucking weird one. It, it really changes gears. <laughs> <laughs> really changes gears on you, and then I don't know. But um, that's my opening impressions. I'm going to get Maja's opening impressions, and then I'm going to round them off with Scotty's. Maja, All right. I remember you watching this before me sitting at the table. I was probably playing Root on the PC. <laughs> And you laughed a bunch. She was laughing constantly. Yes. And I was like, I don't think the wasteland is supposed to be as funny as my <laughs> wife finds it. And this concerns me. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I'd never seen this. Never before. I've seen The Road really? Warrior okay, multiple cool. times. I'd never seen the first one either, which I watched before we started this block. And now at, now I'm at this one. And I'm like, okay, it's definitely different. <laughs> and there's there's some explanations for that like behind the scenes what was going on and stuff like that that mm. i can get into a little bit i mean it's it's not a, not that much but um yeah it's it's great until about 40 minutes and then i'm like what the fuck is going on it's a on? weird one it's a weird shift <laughs> it's so weird uh one of the projection things i'm going to say before we let scott jump in and thank you maja is that um is it james byron um, or Byron, Byron Kennedy. Byron Kennedy. James, yeah, that, that's, James Byron, I think, is the actor from Blade Runner who shoots the guy under the table. <laughs> or that James Bryan, B-R-I-O-N. He spells it weird. I can't remember. But anyway, um, Byron Kennedy is the was the scouting was scouting locations and sadly died when he crashed his helicopter near a dam. Can't remember the name of the dam. And he was Shit. only 33, and he was George's really good buddy, and he helped him with the first two movies. Yeah, they, they made them together. They started a film co company together. Yeah, and he died in a helicopter accident scouting location, so George was just not feeling it. He was really upset about his friend's death. So. Of course, he's, you know, if... Imagine, I'm like, oh, I got to do this this big podcast production in the day before, like, or in the in the in a year before... Or, or in the beginning of the process of a multi-year process, they're like, yeah, Scott crashed his helicopter and died. I'd be like, cool. Yeah. Let's get excited for LSG Media. So I get <laughs> that, right? It, that, that does suck. I'm guessing when he was on set and surrounded by all these professionals and guys like Mel Gibson, he probably was in it, you know? And, um, and you know, so I, I do want to give him a little bit of a pass for that because that does suck. That's that's rough. Yeah, he, he said that he was reluctant to continue for a long time. Yeah. And then eventually was just like, Let, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's I want to work on something to just get over the shock and the grief. And what would Byron Kennedy want you to do? He'd yeah. want you to do the fucking and movie, he's, right? He's also stated afterwards that he doesn't really remember much of the shooting. Mm. Yeah, because your head's somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's not there. So yeah, that's um, that's kind of a little bit of behind the scenes. That's that's going to be the disclaimer I offer because I, I think this movie is going to, I think we're going to be, it was the Wara Gamba, the Wara Gamba Dam, flying helicopter crash of the oh, Wara where Gamba it, where Dam. Where lost control? Yeah, Byron Kennedy, sad. But um, good news, let's go ahead and change gears here and then we're going to let Scott pontificate. Uh, no women were harmed in the making of this movie. Just want you guys to know that. There's literally zero right. female deaths as opposed to rape and death from the second picture and more death and children death in the first picture. Not a woman dies in this picture. Isn't that crazy? Only men die in this movie. I don't really care. This isn't like a men's rights activist thing. You know, I think, <laughs> I think every group stinks. <laughs> Women's groups, men's groups, you all stink. What about the pigs? They suck too. The pig groups are the worst groups. They're so <laughs> annoying. It's just you get into the town hall and it's just a bunch of people oinking. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were all That's hanging upside for. down in a slaughterhouse, honestly. Uh, no. Uh, 13 men die in total and two animals. Not really animals dying, but the horse dies and then um, a pig off camera. Mentioned the pig killer. Killed a pig. He pulled, oh, a, he, yeah. he pulled a Sherwood Forest and dad to kill a king's dare. <laughs> I have issues with the pig killer. <laughs> I, I oh, don't, you think he's a pedophile? He, he, he freaks me out. He's a pig he's fucker. He's super creepy. He's a pig fucker. Oh, yeah. You, oh, he, yeah. you remember the Black Mirror where they, they bribed the guy oh, to fuck God, a pig? Oh, my God, the first he'd be episode. Like, oh, great. He, he, <laughs> he, I guess if, you, if, if I must. <laughs> he needs no fluffing. He just sees that sow's ass and he's in. He's like, oh, no, I have to make it last how long? <laughs> the <Yeah>. broadcast? <laughs> I'm not going to be able to. 
I come really quick when I'm fucking pigs. This is how you get in the algorithm on YouTube, by the way, is this kind of language. This won't get oh, okay. us 140 yep. max views. <laughs> I'm going to start editing these on YouTube, It's going to be think. beep, 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 beep. Yeah, well, most people, even comedians, they just, the sound goes out when they swear. And then they're like, you got to get the podcast for all that. But anyway, um, and uh, yeah, so that was, the, that was the grand body total. And then, of course, the, the tragic loss right. of Byron Kennedy at the War of Gamble Dam. I like saying it, so, sadly. I do like to say that. I'm not saying he should die for me to say it. I'm just saying it's cool to say War of, Bar- <laughs> War of Gamble Dam. You like the name? Milwaukee. It's a cool name. Um, I had another important thing to mention, too. Um, this is just a teaser as to how I feel about the second half of the movie. Um how many fucking kids were on the flight that crashed in the desert? We're not going to go. We're not going to get into that right now. But that's my teaser thought: is that crash was probably a merciful death for the adults on board. <laughs> Intentional <laughs> crash. They're like fucking yes. No, the pilot just nose dives that fucking like that German boy who went crazy and flew into the mountain. He just <laughs> nose dives the fucking plane. <laughs> anyway, it's Scott, done. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Yes, hit me. I have no memory of this Ugh. fucking movie. You have no memory None. of it's it. It's not at like all. I remember sitting on the couch and watching Road Warrior. Yeah. I remember watching this one because this one was the first time you see Max not have a motorized vehicle. Ugh. And that as a kid, I was like, what the fuck? He's got camels, no V8. What well, this is lame. <laughs> you know? But uh I, I loved this movie as a kid. I I think I was the age bracket they were aiming for, like a little bit older than the little shits in the desert. Me too, though. I was uh, ten. What is it? Eighty six. Yeah. The year we got the year the New England Patriots got eighty five smashed. Okay, so a year before bad sports in Boston. Um, I was nine. Yeah, but like, I, as a kid, I loved watching this all the way through. As a, an adult, I say that the 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 second act really suffers. <sighs> it really slows this movie down, changes the the whole tempo of the movie and the whole feeling as well uh it goes from being very serious to very comical and and i know that he leaned into that a little bit george miller in the road warrior a little bit there was a a couple things that made you laugh because they're just quirky and weird this one goes over the top with that with all the kids and like you know the little dude who who uh can you know he's the only one with any kind of knowledge master uh, or blaster or master master (laughs) and um you know I still enjoy this movie. I still loved watching it. And I still loved at the time, anything that expanded that Mad Max universe. Right. Because this was, this came out when I was just starting to be, you know, I was, I was three when this came out, but it was syndicated when I was, you know, 10, it was always on television. So I loved this. I love the whole, the whole world it brings. It makes, it took the road warrior. Mad Max was a tiny story. Road warrior is a bigger story. This one is even bigger. Um, but I think it suffers because of that. It gr- it, the scale's gone too wide for me. I think Mad and we'll, Max we'll and, and Road Warrior are pretty similar in scale, actually. You watched Mad Max more recently, Masha. What do you think of that? Yeah, uh, it's it's just a different world because the collapse hasn't really happened yet. Right, it's on the brink. Yeah, but as as for the size of the story, I would think it's about the same. Yeah, you'd almost yeah, argue comparable. that the Road Warrior narrative is tighter focused. I think so. Well, yeah, because yeah. there's nothing to Takes it. Over. There, there, there's no, yeah. there's no family. There's no cop. You know, being an organized cop, he's just out there trying to survive. Yeah. And this one, he's gone even farther away from from anything. He's now completely alone. He's he's wandering the desert. I kind of like it. He kind of he only goes to Barter Town because to where he gets fucking Buffalo. Run Barter Town. <laughs> Little pig guy, <laughs> poor bastard. Oh shit. But yeah, I I, st- I still like this. I it definitely suffers. It definitely suffers. You can you can see where uh, there's not the heart in it. And now that I know the story you told, it kind of see seems like that's why. Yeah, it's 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 interesting to put it that way. There's no heart. It doesn't feel like there's as much heart in it. Um, yeah, I'm 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 going to think about that. I don't know if maybe yeah maybe that's maybe that's part of it, but. Uh, I guess, I guess really the ultimate question becomes, do you like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome? It sounds like you do, Scott. Yes, I still do. How about you, Marshall? I still like it. I, I do. Me too. I enjoy the world building. And yeah. I, I don't know about heart because I feel like maybe he's going for a very different kind of heart after just suffering a personal tra- tragedy. <laughs> <Yeah>. So. <laughs> 
Right. So okay. <laughs> surround, your, surround yourself with weird talking children. Yeah. They'll play out of your funk. Yeah, there you go. Um, all right. Well, before we continue, let's get into this email. This is from a man named Carl. Carl uh, says, I should make an effort to send thoughts before you do a podcast rather than after. Um he he talks here a little bit about civil war, a cautionary story that applies for many countries, not just the USA, he was saying. For me, the movie capped off a strange week that began going to great lecture by the president of the White House Historical Association and ended with seeing the house being shot to pieces. I've been lucky enough to have done the tour of the White House in your Congress, he says yours, so I found it quite moving. Your review <laughs> was spot on. What? Thank you. I was in the last year of high school when we saw Mad Max on the big train in 79. Damn. You old as fuck, bro. Sick. Explain. Uh, it was a big deal here. Mel was an unknown, and it shot him to fame in Australia. Suffice it to say, it's to blame for some bad driving in my generation. It led to some bad driving. I learned to drive in a Falcon, but Dad's was not as hot as the Pursuit Special. Mel was a heartthrob by the time Road Warrior, and the movie was an even bigger deal. Watch him in the 81 World War One classic, Galap- Gal- Gal- Galapoli, by Peter Uvia. If you do a war block, I'd recommend it. You mentioned wild driving in the outback. Right, I did. He said, we had a good remote straight roads. You travel for hours without a bend. That had open speed limits. All have limits now. Biggest danger was roos at dusk. So kangaroos at dusk. <laughs> it's like a deer through the windshield, except it says windscreen, except the buggers are bound at speed, hit one over 80 and you're dead. Fortunately, the, they're mostly asleep during the day. So you don't speed after dusk. On a trip to Nam- Namibia, a friend would drive in the bush with the headlights off to avoid attracting wildlife. Again, your podcast was spot on, and there's n- and there's poll winning material for your end of year awards. Um, you mentioned Brian May doing the music. It deserves mention that he's also the lead guitarist in Queen. How did we forget to say that? No, it's a different Bi- Brian May. Really? That yeah, because Are you I one hundred percent about that. Yes, because Damn, I. Damn, Carl. Mm-hmm. I'm Bro. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What be- happened? Because <laughs> when I when I he wa- just hit a roo. <laughs> When I watched the first one, I'm like, Brian May, really? Like, right. the Brian May of Queen. I'm like, I, I assumed that. Then I looked it up and was like, oh, no, that's a different guy with the same name. <laughs> oh. Dude, you're going to blow this guy's mind. He's thought that his whole life. And now I, now I need to double you check. You better make sure, because he's going to come after your ass. He's going to fucking, you're going to hear, wow, 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 wow. he's going to be hiding in the bushes and get you. Um, She's looking that up. So, uh, not to be confused with Brian May, the British musician and Queen guitarist. Okay. Different guy. Yep. All right. Because he says officially a knight, Sir Brian May. Mm-hmm. Damn, 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 Carl, are you going to take that shit? <laughs> Fuck, bro, you better clap back. I see the above as chapters in a rolling apocalypse. In Mad Max, you could still get a milkshake from a corner shop or go to the pub. By Civil War, the military get involved, and you're lucky if you can gas station that takes Canadian dollars. Road War is the aftermath, beginning of the end. I see he likes putting Civil War in this trilogy. I thought Beyond Thunderdome suffered too high from expectations, wasn't tight, and tried to make up for it with stunt casting Tina Turner and Angry Anderson as Iron Bar. Anderson had a well-founded reputation here as a short, muscly, bald, violent thug lead singer in a band called Rose Tattoo. Hard rock, heavy stones influence, never really left Australia. Who would likely bash you and ram a pool cue up your arse if you looked at him the wrong way in the pub? He got soft and cuddly in his later years. He's four feet tall. <laughs> Maybe He's still playing. <laughs> he fucking kicks my ass when he sees me. Remember me, bitch? He's got his grudge mask on above his head. His, oh no! His grudge mask flag. <laughs> He's wearing that thing Dude, like a fucking get- like he's a, like he's a, like in the Japanese army and like the feudal Japan with the fucking <laughs> the fucking. Flag. Imagine how much that tickles. I know. Constantly. Oh, he can't be tickled. Yeah. He's iron. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Iron Bar or some shit. Iron Bar. Um, yeah. Maybe Thunderdome deserves another chance now. Well, it's gonna get another chance. Thanks for the email. Seriously, Carl, appreciate you. Hopefully, we didn't just upend your world by telling you that's not the Brian man you think it is. <laughs> anyway. Life ruiner. Um, Sorry. (laughs) So (laughs) the opening of this movie right up through the entire first act is tremendous. I really, truly believe that. Um, There is some inseparable foreshadowing up front when we get the really annoying kid. Like when I see Jedediah's kid just being a kid and annoying. And listen, I want to say this right now. I'm not anti-child. Okay. I got nephews, nieces. My friends got kids. Kids are cool, okay? 
This isn't like a, you don't get it. You didn't fucking want your thing. Come on, you my pussy. You don't get it. You can't make fun of kids. Ah, kick and scream. This isn't that. It's just annoying. There's just a little annoying in a gritty post-apocalyptic setting. I'm not saying they shouldn't exist. They should, of course, indeed. Because who else is going to be the Messiah that leads them away in the end through the desert <laughs> out of Hollywood? I, I the mean, whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, Mel Gibson is trying to give us a warning about Hollywood and the depredations that children face at the hands of these monsters by leading these children to liberation, <laughs> like a Jesus figure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real story of Thunderdome, guys. Black helicopters. Black. Anyway, he's a fucking he's Jesus. He's Jesus All leading right. the kids out of Hollywood away from their the creepy depredations of movie producers. That's the real story of Thunderdome. <laughs> You know, <laughs> they find him, he's dead, he resurrects, he's, you know, he fucking rolls the stone. Next thing you know, he's fucking... <laughs> rolls the stone, jumps out of the box. He does, and he's like, let's go, kids, get away from the likes of Weinstein, et cetera. Those types, yeah. allegedly. Allegedly. Um, so, yeah. I don't About know. Gits being annoying, I mean, is the feral kid in Road Warrior no, annoying? No, he's fine. Yeah, he's not. He's fine. But, but the, the little guy with the, this is a stick up, <laughs> when the train comes on, yeah. shut up. If the, Anybody moves <laughs> and they're dead mate. Can you imagine like, if oh, you, you just push shit. down the accelerator <laughs> and next yeah. thing you know, you got Gage on the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little shoe twirling. Although I think he was barefoot, a uh. little monster. But uh, no, back to the opening. Just have his, saf his safari hat. <laughs> yeah, the hat the flies. <laughs> <laughs> like a Looney Tunes picture. <laughs> but no, the, the opening is awesome, man. This set piece is great. It's a great set piece. In fact, it may be one of the best set pieces. I think it's the best set piece in all three movies. I think it's better than The Refinery. Oh, for sure. Yes. It's got more life to it, definitely. It definitely I mean, has more life to it. It's not run by Papa Gallo. By the way, Tina Turner's great in this. Yeah. What's yeah. the problem with Tina she, Turner in this? I've heard criticism. She's fucking great. She, I think it's just that she's Tina Turner. I think she plays yeah. Auntie like really well as someone who who is smart, capable, turns something out of, out of nothing, and then it gets stuck in this this moment where they it gets indelicate because she's losing control of her 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 whole setup here to someone else who actually knows. And so she's pushed into a corner. I like that. I like that. She's, she's trying to, it's very, it's very Brutus from the Senate, you know, and she's it's not very one like, note either. Like she doesn't kill Max in the end. No, like there's no there's Ill, a mutual respect. Yeah. There's no ill will. It's just business. And that's what like, ain't we a pair? It's a cute little political moment in this film, isn't it? But, um, the way she's trying to run barter town, but, Man, just him arriving, you know, he gets his shit robbed. It leads him to Bartertown. And just his, just the way he, his, when he gets to Bartertown, the way the camera wants to paint this place, the way Miller's like, let's show this lived in place. Crazy outfits, crazy people selling wacky, ir irradiated water, and, and just all of the costumes. So much of this movie in Bartertown is made visually, it's just a visual treat. And it doesn't feel overproduced at all. It feels messy. It feels a bit lived in. This entire sequence feels like something Mel could have directed, who I think is also a great director. Just Absolutely. when you look at Absolutely. it, it's phenomenal. The costumes, the hairstyles, even though there's a lot of weird, goofy stuff. Some of these shots with the, the collector here, like that light oh, shining light down on him, him, and there's this moving ceiling fan that keeps just pushing a shadow over his head. That happens a few times, you know, when Max has to spin the wheel, the light just keeps flicking across his face, the reflection of the light. It just is really interesting cinematography, just a face looming in the background. Just shots like this that I think are really bring Barter Town to life, and it feels tight. It feels closed in. It feels a bit overcrowded, a bit, like there's a bit too much going on there, you know? Yeah, like they're they look how many many people are in that little cave they're in right now. There's a there's you know what it looks like there's sixty or seventy people and it's it doesn't look bigger than like a, a room or two. You know, it's it it does a good job of, of building a little little world in this barter town. And the part that I loved about an actual like reestablished city. Now you got to look at the timeline. They lost everything. They you know the machine sputtered. They they had a nuclear war and now once again commerce is kind of creep back into the world. There's kind of, they're trying to bring order back, even though, you know, the whole thing 
the whole world ending completely lost all semblance of law and order. And all of a sudden there's this place in the middle of nowhere where they have laws, they have trade, they have peace. And, and the, the whole thing about, uh, you know, the Thunderdome is that's their way of problem solving of conflict resolution after the end of the world. And that's just so cool to me. It's mm. just, not a it's perfect such a solution. world building thing. No. <laughs> By any means, but no. Uh well, I mean, it, it is though, normally, except for the fact that they're playing the political game. Auntie's playing the political game in this, where she goes, I need to get rid of somebody who's close. We can't do it. So we'll hire you out. Hmm. Before this, I would imagine that they've had no issues because all the issues squashed once one guy dies in the Thunderdome. Yeah. Yeah. Bartertown is just an interesting idea. You know, you would imagine it was this. Outpost town just kind of pops up. People start, you know, arriving, migrating into the town. Some strong people start to dominate the town, right? I guess, uh, as I would imagine, Auntie, she has enough charisma, enough sway. She's got people with her. We don't really know Auntie's story, but I like to imagine it. It, it. It's one of those things in movies where we don't have to know the story, but we can imagine what it was like. And... um yeah, there are places just like this, actually, <laughs> in the world still, which is pretty wild. But it does it does have this market bazaar chaos to it. It's uh, lived in. It's very dirty and dusty, and it's a mess. People are messy. There's nothing clean about it, right? Meaty no, Phil love, Collins is it's... wearing his shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah, he's the one who's getting his head shaved. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is <laughs> Phil Collins with some meat on him. <laughs> Lord. Definitely yeah. is. Less Miami Vice Phil Collins. <laughs> 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 he's thin with lots of colors on his person. I, I like the thing that these people are coming in here to trade and they might not necessarily even get access to the city itself. Yeah. They're just coming to drop off things and maybe trade and get something else in, in return and some, some of them get inside. And Look, the wastelands, the wastelands that said that they're best. So they screen them, right? <laughs> they screen them at the border, so to speak. <laughs> so, well, yeah, because they definitely don't, they definitely don't want the robbing and the, the, they said, you know, the robbing leads to fighting, fighting leads to warring and warring nearly killed us all. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it got to kind of be selective, yeah, uh, you could you say discriminatory, there. but yes, that's a that's a word that's a little uh, weird now. It just means you're discriminating between two. When you go to the grocery store, you discriminate. You're like, do I want this or this? <laughs> what what informs my opinion of this bread or this bread? And they have to do it here for sure because they don't know these people from a fucking hole in the wall. There's no legal process. There's no fucking paperwork. It's really just Auntie has to set up smart play. I mean, I think Auntie's smart. I like that, you know, what What do you have to trade? In other words, Barter Town has become this locale that generates prosperity. And that's pretty important in a post-apocalyptic world. Can you get things? What do you offer, I think, is one of the collector's questions. What do you have? That's a pretty crazy thing to think about because we're heading to the Mad Max times in the United States, which means in the world. So good luck. Because the U.S. goes, you're all coming too. And um, we'll drag it down. Yeah. When you get to Mad Max times in real life, which is where we're headed, that's going to be a real consideration. What are you offering? What do you, what do you, you know, this is, this is a thing in. What <clears> skills <throat> do you have? What do you, what do you got? Right. You're a sale. You're, you're a, you're a, I mean, it, it, and this also gets back to, it gets back to what's her name? It gets back to fucking Auntie. I love the moment where she says, I was nobody. I was a cop. Yep. I was a cop. Yep. She's like, I was nothing. Which is also tongue in cheek because she's a fucking mega pop star. But it is cool. <laughs> it is cool that she says that because you, I, I, I always remember when Walking Dead was good, the speculation was, I wonder what this person did before, right? It's like when they asked Captain Miller and Private Ryan, what are you? That we're, we're, and he won't tell his, he won't tell his subordinates. And then they find out later he was a school teacher who was a fucking yeah, captain in the army <laughs> running guys. And they're to freaked out by it. Murder fucking <laughs> shoot Nazis to death. But anyway, um, yeah, I like how she just is, is, she was nobody. So she thrives in this environment. And when America gets to Mad Max times, you got to ask yourself, where are you going to be? You know, what if you have to walk up to this yeah. dude wearing 
M60 ammunition across his chest. And you have to be like, oh, no, no, I'm thinking the wrong guy, the collector. And you got to be like, what's your skill set? And you're going to be like, um, I'm a network admin. He's like, and computers don't <laughs> exist. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, I'm a TikTok influencer. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we could use your charisma to like, you know, to just to wow the people. There's always the brothel. <laughs> <laughs> he mentions it. Don't look at me like that. Uh, I'll rock it up here. My name's Max. I'm going to give you a hand job today. That's going to be four, <laughs> four pounds. Get up here. Pull out your cock. I'm, hands are a bit, hands are a bit, I mean, well, you know, I've been lifting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the oldest job in the world. That's all right. Yep. And fall right back into it if we had the chance, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, it, it, I'd be, I'd be, a, I'd be the nice woman of the night. I'll be honest. Although the, you do hear about this when it's like this guy who ends up leading some civilization. They're like, "What did you do before this?" He's not like, "Oh, I was a general." He was like, "Oh, I was a fucking car sales, car salesman." Like, like, exactly. The, the, you talked your way to the fucking the postman. The, <laughs> yeah. What did he sell? Yeah, the postman. Co- copy machines. That, yeah, he <laughs> that was that a guy. salesman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Know what I was before the war? Nothing. I was a copy machine. Star. Right. That's right. I it's was trying to think though. of when we just thought of this. It was Postman mm-hmm. where this came up and I was saying Walking Dead. But yeah, it's, um, I, I rarely remember Postman, sadly. But um, Auntie has standing orders. She's figured it out. Whether she has a counsel advising her, you know, like the collector, the guy with the, that call, that's the guy called Pig Neck, Piggy Neck. Piggy Neck and Grudge Head may be advising her or Iron Bar, as he's known. But um, yeah. but she's got this thing down, right? Do you have anything of value? Well, what are you going to bring to Barter Town, Scott? Oh fuck! Um, I don't know. I mean, I do have some skills. I have a lot of knowledge, but I mean, same here. But it's goods, nothing. Ex- no expertise. I'm not an expert. No, not really. Anything, I mean, but I am a jack of all trades. How would I pitch that? Yeah, I can do a ton of shit. How would I pitch? I don't think I'd make it there. Yeah, no. How would I pitch that to Piggy? Well, what do you think? What would you bring? I don't know, man. I'd have to pitch Jack of all trades to Piggy. <laughs> I would you know? be like, I can, I can make clothes and and crochet and knit and yeah. One make look food. at you, they're like, you're going right to the the main guy's fucking bed. <laughs> yeah, no, I would rather go in the kitchen. <laughs> no offense, that's what they would probably say. Yeah, in the kitchens. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> yep. If you're lucky, <laughs> better to cook sausage than smoke it your whole life. You know. Ugh. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one's a good one. You didn't like it, Maja? <laughs> but no, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really cool step. The commerce, there's commerce, there's laws, and um, it's great. But a sensible way to keep uh, out the riffraff, by the way, is to well, yeah, is if, to if scan they don't for have weapons anything. on the way in. And they have no nothing to bring in, then you know you know better. And if they're that's kind of like you know it's uh you know the Dodge City or Tombstone. No one said you can't have a gun, but you can't bring your gun in town. Keeps the peace, keeps people you know normal, and uh, everyone's on the even keel except for Auntie's soldiers. They're the ones who are heavily armed, walking through the crowds, keeping people in line. Mm. She's showing force, even though she's not the one doing it. She's living up in her little ivory like silk <laughs> underwear <laughs> tower up there above everyone, fucking her drapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I like that too because it's kind of it's something unique. It's it's not she's in a castle. She's literally hovering like above all the commerce. Everything's crazy underneath her, and and then when you go up the elevator, you hear nothing. All you hear is her. She has like a chubby, I don't know, sumo wrestler guy playing the saxophone. Yeah, play something tragic. She's great. She's rad. They're just <laughs> hanging out. By the way, when she, when she first sees Mel. Um, the fuck did she say oh yeah this but he's just a raggedy man that's a great line <laughs> this is a very quotable movie he's just a raggedy man but um yeah it is uh back to you talking about these guys working on you gotta put yourself in this position right you so the question becomes did auntie establish barter town did she find barter town i think she does <sighs> say that she was up to armpits in what blood and shit. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think just the chaos of any humans being together at this point. In yeah. Time. Yeah. Like, like what happened? Was it just a place where people, so then it can't be crazy. It, then it's probably not a very old place, but it's almost like tombstone. Like it just gets found one day because of gold. 
Yeah, like they just started this thing and, and people started showing up. Yeah, I'm not and sure. she just was able to amass power. Yeah, I don't know where the pigs came from, but I guess their entire economy runs on methane, which is derived of pig shit when refined properly. And I guess that's where, is it called Underworld? Yeah. Yes. Underworld run by is- Master Blaster. And uh, they have this interesting alliance. Like she has the monopoly on force and- Apparently, Master is the smartest guy in 50 square miles because... Or in the whole they, world, <laughs> so it I seems. They act, like, they act like he is. He definitely had some kind of, you know, he definitely worked at a refinery or something where he has the knowledge. Like an engineer. And the, and the knowledge of the internal combustion engine. Mm-hmm. Later on, you find out that everything that, that their whole system is plugged into is basically a truck on a train track. Well, I'm going to ask That's you this question right through. now, speaking of discrimination. Yes. Let's say that you have a major car repair. All right. And you go, fuck. And you have two options. The first option is a garage filled with a bunch of, you know, regular looking guys with veiny arms and grease stained fingers, etc. They smoke a lot of cigarettes right. and, you know, they say fuck a lot and stuff. So, and then you go to another place and you see Master. And he's like... The little guy? Yeah. He's like, listen to me. Nobody can get at your engine problem better than me. You'd go with that guy. <laughs> that guy can get in your engine and fix shit. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Dude, like, he's got he's no, like, no, I can... He can't turn a wrench, dude. He can't turn a wrench. You don't think he can? With he's his, not going to have enough leverage, dude. I don't know, man. You, you, you might... He, his forearms might be as stronger than you think. I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to disparage him for being a, a you know a smaller person, but I mean, you need a lot of force when tor- torquing wrenches. Dude, technology. I don't know. Maybe if he had Blaster with him. How about now? Is Blaster like helping him? I think ba- Blaster runs the lift, but you got to be careful with Blaster. It's not too bright. But I think you that think <laughs> yeah. about. It. He's like, I'll change your timing chain without even fucking. We don't. We don't have to pull everything out. I just get in there. Especially nowadays with cars, I mean, it's maybe. so cramped, dude. Like a That's new car. Worse. If you're little. I think you have an advantage in auto mechanics, I guess is my point. So I would admit, I, mean, I, I think that's so, good. I, mean, I, 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 I think I'll champion that cause. I think it would be good to, you know, I, I, how about this? I'm a little person supremacist when it comes to fixing cars. I've decided it here on the podcast. Standard issue sized men and women can go fuck themselves. I'm, I want, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm an ally. My you just drive away because they don't have a little person. Yeah, in the, I pull up in the, and I see in the bays. I, dude, I pull up and I see a, a <laughs> fucking Tom Brady tall guy. Fuck that, I'm leaving. You're so you tall and downshift stupid. Downshift and take off. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Or normally, yeah. I'm. I. I guess I think he can get at it. But besides his height, I think he's supposed to be really smart and he understands mm, refining shit. Yeah. Right. And like, he's got to understand like plumbing because there's a bunch of a bunch of things that are plugged into that truck mm. and you got to understand how engines work. So he's, he's definitely knowledgeable. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and he knows he's knowledgeable, so he doesn't share that knowledge. He uses that. He loom, lo, looms that over auntie's head at every chance he can. Can you blame every him? Every chance he can. No, I wouldn't. I'm the one doing all the work. You're, you're taking all my credit. Yeah. I can, I can understand why I'd be pissed off. Exactly. You don't want to give it up unless you're, you got to get something. And that's the same thing. When I look at auntie's position, she's like, I got all the fucking guns, dude. Am I going to let you in here with guns? No. Mad Max is going to leave a comical amount of weaponry with the weapon <laughs> check-in guy. The weapon check-in guy is hilarious <laughs> because he's just sitting there with his Rambo bandolier straps. And he looks like a guy yeah. who definitely went to Vietnam. Right. And he's got that sort of, I'm going to grow my hair long and a beard now. No matter. He, he's really, he's going, we keep bringing up Lieutenant Dan. But he's really post-war Lieutenant Dan. Fucking haircuts. Kind of just hanging out. Yeah, no more haircuts. <laughs> he's done with that. And now he's a weapon checker guy. So the weapon checker guy is, is taking all your weapons. And why? Because, well, the skill or the position that she finds herself in. Auntie's like, no, you can't come in with weapons. I run barter town. That makes it sense. It makes sense. You keep every you keep everything kind of kind of docile, and if you lo- and if you got into, into any problems, you had a problem with someone, you you could solve it right at the the Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is a, something different at, at you know that they don't 
have anywhere else is this one thing where they, if you come to a problem with someone, it ends today. It yes. ends at the end of this fight and there's no more problems. There's no more issues. There's no need for you to bring your gun in. There's no, there's no, you know, Oh, that guy robbed me. I shot him in the street. No, it's, Oh, I think he robbed me. I'm going to challenge him to Thunderdome. And now we are both obligated to be part of the Thunderdome until one of us is dead. I think this is a terrible such system a of cool government. <laughs> you know, you don't think that would work. No. Here's why. Ready? Scott. Yes. Um, how much do you weigh? Uh, 180. Okay. So the 180 pound champ of USC, UFC <laughs> says that guy stole from me. I challenge him to a fight in the Thunderdome. <laughs> you're like, fuck. Well, <laughs> he just beats the brakes off. I mean, you're you. kind of shit out of luck for sure. He just beats the brakes I mean, off you and you are innocent the whole time. This gets back to Jacques Legree <laughs> in the last duel. <laughs> Wait, I don't fucking know. <laughs> You know? I did not sleep with your wife. <laughs> As he's fucking pushing the knife into his neck. Exactly. Jesus. There's a reason we don't duel anymore. Because what if I just accuse yeah. you knowing I'm like the best shot? But it, it's a little <laughs> different because you're jumping on those ropes there. <laughs> <laughs> so that might change things a little. Like I was thinking like you I would I would be just dead in, in <laughs> 10 seconds. But I'm like, no, you get to bounce around on those things. Maybe I have a chance, actually. You're a, yeah, but your problem is, is you're a waif. So the second they put you in the harness, you'd just be up in the air. You're like, I can't yeah, even but I'm just, I'm just going to be climbing up there and picking up all the weapons and stabbing down and throwing them down at the guy. You just slip through oh, the bars. Shit. Like, Where should you go? I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, you could fit through those. Yes. <laughs> you oh, might be shit. easily picked out in post amongst post-apocalyptic faces, though, if I'm being honest. You put some dirt on my face, yeah, post-apocalyptic looking fucking creep. You, you just like a, a pretty girl with dirt on your face. <laughs> yeah, a pretty There's, girl with some black grab, smudge. Grab her. She's full of shit. She's not post-apocalyptic. <laughs> She's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> She's not from the wasteland. <laughs> Where'd she go? I don't know. She bounced up through the Thunderdome because she weighs no pounds. She weighs zero pounds on the fucking... The, the, oh my God, that's awesome. But no, it is... Uh, yeah, <laughs> so what are you saying? Like... Some Cirque du Soleil guy would just, <laughs> he's like undefeated. <laughs> yeah. He's just bouncing that around and fruity, <laughs> fruity scarf dancing guy just becomes the absolute terror of. <laughs> he's just a killer. He's just an absolute. The entire time. Yeah. Just, I never thought this skill would be useful I mean, in a deadly, you know, in a deadly way, but here we are. I mean, I guess, I guess you're right. It wouldn't work, but I mean, for the apocalypse, I think it's kind of, kind of the best you're going to get. It's a, not a bad band aid. Yeah, like you, I can see that. Listen. I can see it. At least keeping your society growing, your society would keep moving because you're not having these, you're not building gangs, you're not building, you know, to who's choosing sides. It's kind of just one and done. Yeah, just when you are the biggest gang in town, let's just say, for example, the government, you don't want any mm -hmm. other gangs competing for you, with you for the competition. You know what I'm nope. saying? Snuff them out. Snuff them out. And let's be real. We're giving Auntie a lot of credit, and I think she deserves it. But, but, Maja, do you think Auntie has what it takes to establish a law and order court based system <laughs> in Barter Town? Do you think the likes of Iron Bar could draft up some fair laws for this little. Uh, <laughs> law and order music plays in the background. As you're trying to figure out. She's writing down all these laws. <laughs> all rise there she comes no i think it's uh I, I think she was like but but i think she ultimately there's nothing written there's no it's just word of mouth law you know it's very it's very oral tradition society shit like the vikings like this is how it goes because why because this is how it goes is it in the book what book fuck your book it's maybe on a, it's on a stone somewhere. There's a fucking glyph. Go read that. But she just decides when it's time for that fight to happen. She's like, I guess it's time. Put him in. Put him in. You know? You know the law. Two men enter, one man leaves. That's it. Two men enter, one man leaves. But yeah, I do like that. I do like that she's trying here. I like that she's got a... I guess you'd say... Um, <laughs> To use some uh, libertarian type uh, tech terminology, she has the monopoly on force. 
Absolutely. Right. She's I, got all the soldiers. I think she also has just the charisma to be a leader that people actually like. Right. And she's the, like a celebrity. Right. And the guns to back it up. Yeah, she's clearly, you know, the cleanest, most attractive person. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm attracted to Tina Turner, and I'm not saying she's unattractive, but she's just one of those people who are like the cleanest, best cheekbone people <laughs> in this town. <laughs> so people are like, she talked good. Listen to the lady who talked to it. <laughs> Let's follow her. She knows what she's talking about. But she yeah, was a nobody. It's... What do you think she did? What? Well, let's guess. What did Auntie do? Be- in the supermarket? I she, I th- oh, nice. What did she do in the supermarket? I don't know. Like, Thank you so much for coming ca- to stop cashier. and shop, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she's, a, she's a greeter. You know, she's not even there. She's at the... Well, no, welcome, she's not. Welcome. No. no. <laughs> No, that's like, have a good day. That's Blaster. Blaster's a greeter. <laughs> Blaster's a greeter. <laughs> yeah. Blaster's a or greeter. Bagger. And there's nothing wrong with that. He <laughs> should be a bagger. Go get those cards. That's Blaster. Great. Go get those cards. That's great. Bagger, by, either- by the way, the most nonsensical profession that I've ever heard of does the- not exist outside of America. <laughs> <laughs> Baggers? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know. I mean, might, but not to my knowledge. Not, no, yeah, it does. Probably not in Finland. Finland, they can't even look at each other in Finland. No. <laughs> Everyone in Finland's autistic. That's why they can't look at you, each other. You bag your own fucking groceries. <laughs> We're savages here. We pay some kid $10 to do it for us, okay? If somebody says hi to somebody in Finland, they're like, are you trying to rape me? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> a cold people in a cold climate. <laughs> oh, shit. No, I'm, I'm, I take it back. That's that's not nice to say. I would never accuse autistic people of being Finnish. I would never do that to them. <laughs> <laughs> got her. Nice. Nice one. Oh, shit. He's got the mind of a child. I know. That's why he's bagging. <laughs> I know I do. Thanks for pointing it out So there, she's master. not a bag. Dude, You, I can't believe you, you come at Tina like that. <laughs> What's love? And you're like, she bags? Fuck you. You take that back right now, Scott. She's probably, she maybe has a couple kids. She's not... Maybe not working full time, just trying to trying to make ends meet. Has a couple shifts at the grocery store. That's a like very that. disgusting thing that you just said. Is a white male? Oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> wait what? <laughs> You're not. I'm course. just trying I'm not... to come up with a story here. I like why, it. Keep why, why she would why she would say that she's a nobody? The, the mo- mothers are the most important jobs in the world. I'll have you know. I'm just painting a more tragic story for her that she's now lost her children. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How'd she lose her kids? I know how. I've seen boys in the hood. It's really tragic. <laughs> you know. Why do you think they have no guns in Barter Town, Ned? <laughs> they saw boys in the hood. God <laughs> 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 oh, damn, dude. Poor Ricky. Hey, listen. Fucking Ricky. Yeah. Anyway, um, was it Ricky? Oh, no, no, it was Cuba. I can't remember. I, I haven't seen the movie in like fucking 20 years. Ice Cube is Doughboy, of course. He's great. But um, we'll come back to that later because we talk about musicians and movies, speaking of. In fact, why don't we do it right now? Doughboy is great. Ice Cube and fucking Boys in the Hood is amazing. Right? Crash Down Apocalypse. I haven't seen it in a bit. Sting and Doom. Yeah. Cold Seal says Jared Leto in Fight Club. Jared Leto's a fucking musician. That I didn't know that till today. May 24th. 20 30 seconds to Mars, yeah. dude. May 24th in the year of our Lord, 2024. I didn't know he was a I guarantee you've heard his songs and not know it was him. Great. Sounds it, like- It the, was one of those 2000s emo bands. Hmm. Yeah. Like, that song. Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> Wasn't that Bon Jovi? <laughs> no, how dare you, <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not, not Bon Jovi. <laughs> you take it back right now. Richie Sambor is beautiful. All right, I did. I did. So anyway, um, other, other people said, um, uh, oh, oh, uh, Captain Ahab said, Roger Daltrey in Highlander TV show? Yikes. Didn't he get in trouble what? or something? Tom uh, Waits. Oh, no, a... I'm thinking somebody else. Tom, whatever the fuck. Tom Waits in Book of Eli. How about Tom Waits and Dracula? Yeah, Renfield, sick. Um, I'm told a culturally insensitive picture is dead, wanted dead or alive. Gene Simmons, I'm gonna fuck your girl. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Gene Simmons, yeah. he's so weird, dude. I don't know, 
about that guy. Mick Jagger and Free Jack. That's a good one. And Random. That was pro- proffered by that Ronan. One. Um, Voss says, uh, I almost said Peter Pan. I'm a dumb dumb. Steve Vai and Crossroads, of course. The Devil's Guitarist. Yeah. Dude, how about Prince and Purple Rain? Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Um, when I was a little kid, my stepmother really liked that song. I love, I think that's a great song. It's a very well composed piece of music. Um, but when I was a little kid, I made fun of it. And I remember just getting a piece of paper, and every time she would listen to it, I'd write down purple dicks. <laughs> And I just kept writing purple dicks, purple dicks on a piece purple of paper. Dicks. And then I got in trouble purple and she dicks. found the paper and she took it from me and folded it up and said, she's going to show my dad. And I was like, fuck. Oh, shit. I just kept writing purple dicks and I don't know why. <laughs> that's also not like, to be clear, that's not like a black eye joke. That's not like a purple dick. That's not, it's not that. I was a kid. To my knowledge, I'd never seen a black dick at that point. So it to wasn't even knowledge. that. <laughs> I don't fucking know. You block shit out as a kid. Who the fuck knows what happened to me? So I remember writing purple dicks on paper and being like, fuck. What does that mean? It's not good. It's bad. And I got in trouble. I don't remember the outcome of that. I'm going to have to ask her if she remembers. Um, don't bring it up. She's probably spent the years of money and therapy to try to just forget that you were trying to shower her with purple dicks. Yeah. I wasn't trying to shower with purple dicks. Which oh, one? I thought you like ripped up little pieces with purple dicks. I thought you had multiple pieces of. No, I didn't. Words draw, I didn't draw purple or... dicks. I wrote. I wrote. I used the. I used the king's English, bro. I wrote no, purple okay, dicks okay. in English on a piece of paper. Okay. I, I wasn't sure if you were drawing them and then cutting them into little pieces to like shower with it. I don't know. No, I did draw. I did. I did make a dick animation once as a kid. It was pretty crafty. You know, you take a piece of paper and you fold it, and then you draw one image. And then you roll it up in a pencil and the other image and you go. Oh, f- 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 I thought like at the corner yeah, no, of the notebook. It was just a, a dick going into an unknown orifice. I, I didn't know <laughs> enough back then. <laughs> but um, like what I think it might be, I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, Purple Dicks, which is no shit on Prince. Prince is a brilliant musician. He's great. And Purple Rain is a good song. It's a great song. So it's, it's a it's an all timer. Um, how about Ice-T in New Jack City? That's a great call. Yeah, Ice T is a cop now, which is weird. Forever. We've talked about that before. I haven't. New Jack City's sick. Um, I think I like. Well, co- how about colors with, with uh, yeah, yeah, Sean Penn Jesus. and Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, dumb dumbass. <laughs> Robert Duvall, um, Henry Rollins and Heat. Henry Rollins and Johnny Mnemonic. He's yeah, like, fuck your mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ice Cube and Boys in Hood, another one, right? That's Doughboy. What does he say? A bunch of, he's got more. such a great line. There's so many great lines in that movie by Ice Cube where he's like, you don't go to college to, to chase bitches or something. You go to learn to read. I can't remember. It's a great line. I got to see that movie again. Um, David Bowie and everything. Labyrinth, etc. Oh, Ice Cube and Friday? Yeah, Ice Cube's a pretty decent actor. Yeah, I think out of all, like, I think he's one of the best as far as like an actual musician that becomes an actor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty fucking good. Ice T's pretty good too. Well, um, how about Meatloaf <laughs> in Fight Club? Bob had bitch tits. He's, he's actually pretty good in that. Yep. They could open me up, drain my pecs again. Yeah. Uh, thanks to everybody who wrote in. Voss, Becca, Case Vandenberg, Nate Bates, Brian Campbell, Shay We Shay Shay Wide Weed. I can't remember Wade? how to say it. I don't know. Wade. Yeah, Shay Wade maybe. Jerry Reed um, in Smoking the Bandit, Henry Rollins, uh, Dwight Yoakam in Crank, Debbie Harry in Video Drums. That's a Luke. good one. That's a great one. Also, Bowie is like, to me, the ultimate answer because he did a bunch of such great roles. He's a good actor. There, too. Yeah. There's Man Who Fell to Earth and The Hunger. And one that doesn't get talked about enough is Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence. He's great in that nice. movie. Oh, Shirley Manson from Garbage is in the Terminator Sarah Chronicles. Sarah Connor Chronicles? Yeah, she plays like one of the liquid metal robots. I used to have such a robot. thing for Shirley Manson. She was hot. I think everyone Stupid did. Stupid we girl. Our age. She was just a messy, you know, fishnets kind of. She's perfect. Um, <laughs> okay. Tom Petty and the Postman? Yep, oh, that's right. Man, uh, hey, man, you're famous. <laughs> back down. Um... Lady Gaga, yeah, sure. Um, Billy Ray Cyrus is the great pool cleaner in Lynch's Mulholland Drive. Holy shit. <laughs> no way. Um, 
that's from Matthew Andrews, uh, Jake Andrews, Will Smith, Men in Black. Right, because he was um, Fresh Prince of Bella. Tupac and Juice. I never saw Juice, so I don't know if Tupac's any good. No. Ice Cube, of course. Cher and Moonstruck, The Witches of Eastwick. Yeah, in the movie. <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> Where she? Which movie? The father. The, the, she, she's the mother of the fucking. God damn! I can't remember the name of the movie with Eric Stoltz with a crooked face in the head. Um, oh, uh, the mask. The mask. Thank you. Keith Richards in Pirates. Well, Alanis Morissette in Dogma as as God. There's a bunch of good ones. Iggy Pop in Dead Man. Iggy Pop in Crow City of Angels. He's fucking good in that. Movie. Yeah, that's in an true. otherwise subpar picture. I have one that's a weird one, but Jennifer Lopez in The Cell. I think yeah. a lot of people don't know It's a good know one. What. She's in, you know what? Out of Sight. She's good in that too. That movie's sick. That. Yeah, Out of Sight. And Cell is good too. The Cell is great. People yeah. probably don't watch it because Jennifer Lopez is in the movie, but I don't know. Don't, she got kind yeah. of popular. Yeah, she's going through a reverse renaissance right now because <laughs> she's very terrible to people. Oh. And it's like, there's a lot of footage of it. You better watch oh. out. She'll take out her hoops and fuck you up. Oh, she's from the block. I should worry. <laughs> She'll fuck you up, dude. <laughs> Ass like that generates a lot of torque when she punches. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's some of the uh, some of the musicians, I guess, who have been in movies. But I don't know. I think Tina Turner is really good in this role. That segment was way yeah, too long. I, by it, the way, I apologize. <laughs> Here's how long that segment she, was. Uh... Name ten more musicians. She, she, Nobody gives a fuck. Uh, nope. <laughs> Everybody's just started commenting. Just any like musician this. you can think of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's when we put out listener comments, and it wasn't like you know a cool one. You remember? It's just like oh yeah. yeah. It was oh, and there's this one and this one. There's this little <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> and I just fell for it, so I'm even dumber. Who's more fool, the fool or the fool who follows him? Mm-hmm. That's what Ben Kenobi says. Was that before or after he fucked Padme? Um, <laughs> Blasphemy. We don't know about he that. Did. <laughs> Leia is Ben Kenobi's daughter. I'm telling you right now. Um, so, um, yeah, that nobody stuff was really cool. And by the way, we never really landed on what she does. I'm going to guess that she was, that she worked, f- that she was a, I got it. I know what she did. She worked as some kind of administrator in a prison. Like she didn't have to deal with the okay. prison population. She wasn't a CO. No, she's too pretty to be a CO. I think she was like, no offense, by the way, my mom was a CO and she was quite beautiful. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, I think that she could be a CO. I mean, Tina's tough. I mean, dude, think of how many punches she had to slip from Ike. Just fucking shit that, oh, that fucking peekaboo shit like Tyson. So she could definitely, I'm not saying she's not, I wasn't saying that to make fun of the fact that she was abused. That's horrific. I'm just saying she could fucking deal with that shit. She's tough, right? Tina Turner would whip yeah, JLo's ass. Come on. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm Especially saying? Especially this time, this young, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, this isn't even a fight anymore. But anyway, no, I'm not making fun of the abuse. That was horrific. That movie's horrific, and um, that's terrible. I'm just saying it makes a person tough. No question. And made her tough. Well. How about that? Um, I'm not saying beat your kids up and make them tough, to be clear. I'm not suggesting a course of action. I'm just saying she's tough, and that's why. So anyway. She could be tough regardless of it. She could be even tougher. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Ike looks like he could throw some fucking hooks. But um, yeah, I think that's what she did. So she was a nobody. But it doesn't matter. This is lost interest to everyone listening. Um, I do like that she has a proposition, Right. She tests Max. Hey, Max. Yeah. Yeah. She bites that fucking fruit all aggressively. And that's like the signal. Fuck him up. Get that. Get him. They swarm him. They swarm his ass. And and he puts him out. Because you got to remember that like, there is something about being trained how to use force. He was a cop. And he was a cop. Again, I said this in the last episode. But he was a cop that was really proficient at killing people. (laughs) Had no problem with it. Like, slept like a baby just murdering people on the highway. You know, he'd go back home and be like, you know, Jesse, where's Sprague? Where's my kid? I'm going to give him a hug and eat some peanut butter and banana sandwiches. And mm, uh, yeah, I killed good. six people the night before. I'm okay, though. You know, I'm taking the day off. Honestly, but I'm okay. that is a not great really cop. The best cops in the world are the ones who got the most kills, I think. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The best cops Just have the people. most kills, you know? I think that's definitely <laughs> true. That makes Cobra, oh, okay. a Cobretti, a pretty good cop. Cobretti. Yeah. <laughs> he killed a whole axe cult. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, that fucking movie. Steven Seagal is a cop that can kill. He's killed a lot of people in his movies. But uh, yeah, they test him. He's not not just trained, but he's got a ton of experience fighting for his life. Yeah, and and he's the first one to actually survive it. That's what she says. You're the first one to survive it. And then what what I like about the movie does next is before he agrees, he goes, "I have to see who it is." Right. And they, they set him. They set up for him to go down on, into underworld and shovel shit. And kind of see what he's dealing with. And then he sees his vehicle down there, right? His vehicle, which of course is booby trapped because all of his vehicles are booby trapped. Yeah. And they try to take the bomb off and they see that Bla- Blaster is like, uh, must have problems with high pitched noises because he can't handle it at all. <laughs> he freaks out and throws a little guy like a fucking f- football across the room. <laughs> and uh, that, dude, Max. That's just, that's just the beginning of Master being treated like a football. That dude, just, yeah. oh my god, or a handbag. He's a handbag. Three quarters of this movie, dude. He's or a doll. At, he's an attache case and a spy picture. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Maj is right. There are some parts where he is definitely a doll when he's being held as they jump over yeah. from train car to train car. You think so? I thought he did that stunt. <laughs> I don't when, think so. I don't know. When Mel, <laughs> those, Mel, those limbs are a little stiff <laughs> to, to remind me of something alive. <laughs> Mel tucks him under his arm like he's about to fucking make a jet for the goal line. And, uh, <laughs> yep. I'm going for two. But beyond all the shit that happens, him shoveling pig shit, by the way, is I like the position that he finds himself as. Master is the de facto ruler of Underworld, and without Blaster, Master is easier to control. So they want to get rid of Blaster so they can then control Master. And to Max, he goes, I don't give a fuck. I'm passing through. I'm fine with this arrangement. What do I care? I'll kill a big galoop. Yeah, it's almost like, especially when he sees that he has a weakness. He sees right off the bat that he has a weakness, and he can exploit that when they go to Thunderdome. What a, which is the little whistle he has. What a crazy thing, though. Just imagine they approach you, like you're gonna kill this guy, and you go like, okay, you don't know what that guy did. You don't know anything about that guy. You, but he didn't care. Except he's you wearing what it looks like an iron stove on his head. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> he's a big iron <laughs> stove. You could shovel wood in that thing. But he, but he is just this big, big palooka. And he's like, yeah, okay. But, but he want, like you said, Scott, why do you think he goes in there to want to figure out who he is first? What, what do you think that's about? Well, I mean, anyone who, he wants to size him up. He wants to know, like, you know, what am I getting into before I agree? Fuck because these people feel pre- pretty lethal. The, the auntie's people are, pre- they seem pretty martial, like they can handle themselves. So before I agree and I have to renege on my agreement... I'm going to see who I'm going against. He wants to get close up and see how he reacts and what, what he does. And he does. He gets right up in his face and <laughs> Blaster grabs him by the neck. I mean, yep. it's, it's, it's a smart move. It's a smart move if you're making a deal. Like, I'm not just going to say, yeah, whoever. What if the guy is like nine feet tall and outweighs me by 150 pounds? Like you were saying <laughs> what, earlier. What about the Judeo-Christian values of, you know, just not murdering a guy for gasoline? <laughs> <laughs> Did that ever occur to you, Scott? <laughs> hey, what you know? It's the end of the world here. We don't have those mo- those modern ah, feelings anymore. I'll just kill anymore. that guy. Yeah, you're true. No time for philosophy. Save that for when nope, you not when you're starving. <laughs> Save that for when you get the skyscrapers back up. Fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> just, but yeah, it, it. But it is a it is a funny it is a funny position because think about it from Auntie's perspective too. She's like, okay, I bring this guy in. I test him. He seems like he's good. I don't know if they tr- plan to double cross Max. What what ultimately is it going to be? They can't just let Max go. Is it is the whole plan for him to start a beef and to legally dispatch him in the Thunderdome? Is that the yes? And, yeah, and, and that, I, yes. yeah. That's what I Auntie wants. Were, going. I think she was going to let Max just get his stuff and go. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think she was going to honor the deal because yeah. she needed she needs. Uh, the, uh, Iron Bar even says it. We need the brain. We don't need the body. So you need to take away his power. His power's blaster. So take him out, and we, we, and we can run Bartertown by force now because he doesn't have that muscle. Yeah. And they're they're so delicate, and it's family. They consider it family, which they even say is it's kind of close. So they don't do their own killing. Mm-hmm. They don't want anyone to find out that they're this is the plan. Of course, it's all of course. secret. Yeah. You, this, you're just picking a fight with this guy, 
and you're going to kill them and then you're going to grab your shit and you're going to go. And I'm going to lead this people with no more problems from Master. Yeah. And that was the plan, I think. And I think what happened was when Max sees that it's, you know, it's a special needs guy, he he starts to feel a way about it. And he feels like, I can't kill this guy. He's not all there. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah, and that defines then the rest of the movie. <laughs> the cor- course of everything that happens is defined by that <laughs> moment of me- him making the choice that, that he can't kill this guy. He's got the mind of a child. <laughs> <laughs> and the political <laughs> intrigue is great here because when they find out that she was going to kill, have Blaster killed, he's like, no more, no more. I'm done with Barter Town. Finished. You're, you're, you're done. They shoot him. They arrow they shoot him the, up. They sh- yep. They arrow him up. But they also go, okay, well, we may have done something we're not supposed to. We're not, we're not supposed to kill our own, but he did break a deal. So we're going to turn it around on from us. And put it right on Max. He broke a deal. And when you break a deal here, you face the wheel. That's the rule. Yeah. I love how they're just like, yeah, we, we're doing something we're not supposed to, but he broke one of the laws too. And let's get him and, you know, and punish him. I like the misdirection, like, like our, uh, you know, our <laughs> political people. <laughs> this is do. how it starts. It's a real grassroots corrupt system. I love it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Misdirection and blame on other people. Yeah, because the rule is they go into the Thunderdome, and then once you're in the Thunderdome and you bungee cord fight, essentially what that means is that two men and one man leave. So you're supposed to kill the guy. So yes. he does renege on that deal, which puts him in a tough spot well, with Auntie because Auntie's like, well, this isn't how it works. And then Pig Killer kind of saves his ass because once they off Master... Once they pump him full of fucking arrows, <laughs> that the way they try to put that head on that fucking body is just it makes it look even worse. You know, it looks weird. It looks it looks like it's like yeah. special effects body on top of his head, yeah, or underneath his head. It's weird. The head it, looks very small. It <laughs> looks compared to the rest real, of the body. Yeah, yeah, real tough finding hats for him. Um, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so that's probably why they they that's probably. Well, if you're, I guess, well, propeller hats are pretty small. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just saying. But that. <laughs> Dean slips closer to hell, everyone. And canceled. No, no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I mean, a hat, like, how about, well, what's else? You want me to say a dunce cap? That's small, too. <laughs> What about like a Burger King? Well, you can King? make it any size you want. <laughs> a Burger King crown. <laughs> Hell yeah, Burger King crown. Let's go. <laughs> that could, because you can make it tiny. But dude, you can only make hats so small. Now, take it from a guy whose head's too big. <laughs> My head is so big that I can't even get, like, I, the hats are a nightmare for me. Like, if we go to the Halloween store, right? I'm making fun of a guy with small head. I'm not even, for the record, I'm not even saying that that is a trade of people with intellectual disabilities. I'm not coming out those people. Those people are great, right? I'm just saying the propeller hats run small because they're for children, okay? Oh, okay. okay. I was just waiting for you to tie it in there. It's for children. And if he has the... He's got the mind of a child. Perhaps his head's a little bit small, <laughs> so get a children's hat. Propeller hats are something children use. But anyway, my head's too big. Like if if I go to the Halloween store with, with Maj over there, and I'm like, oh, let me try this hat on. It just sits on top of my stupid, <laughs> fat New England head. And I'm like, I could just... <laughs> my stupid, <laughs> stupid, fat head. Is I it put Shane it on Gillis? and it comes down to, like, <laughs> covers my eyes. I think it's Shane Gillis who says New England fat heads. That's such a great descriptor of people from New England. <laughs> He's absolutely right, right? Although I will say True, Shane Gillis does kind of look like a master. <laughs> but that aside... He's right. We do have fat heads in New England. My fucking head is so big. If my shoulders weren't as wide as they are, humble brag, I would look ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'd rather have a head the yeah, size of Master and only have to wear propeller human. hats <laughs> than have to fucking... Yeah, would, would you rather have a big head and a small body or the other <laughs> way around? <laughs> would I rather be an alien gray or... <laughs> Or some kind of fish. Oh, fish don't even have heads. <laughs> they just part Would of their you body. rather be blaster or, I mean, I'm not going to. A hammerhead shark. <laughs> just 
two eyes <laughs> out by the sides. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But it's, um, I'm sorry. I kind of got distracted by the hat thing. Where was I going with this? Um, yeah, the position, the position Max finds himself in is tough. But um, the position Auntie, because uh, you want this to go down legally because like you said, Scott, you want them to bid you adieu. You don't want them to. Yeah. My guess is they follow him into the wasteland and try to kill him because what if he talks? But then again, why would anyone believe him? I don't, I don't, I don't think they the care. He, don't, nobody cares. They're just running their business and it doesn't matter. It's not that. Yeah, not I, that think it, I think it doesn't matter. I I think they were uh, they were honestly going to honor the deal and have them go, and and be and have a little bit more control over their little society there. Mm -hmm. And Max is just going to be the, a, a tool because he wasn't going to stick around. Right. Yeah, I think you're right about that. But how awesome is this? Think about where Mad Max was at the end of the second picture. He gets double crossed. He has to smirk about it. He lives, but he's busted up. His car's fucked. So he finds himself cobbling together vehicles and camels and whatever the fuck he can get. He's a scavenger. Everyone's a scavenger in these worlds. They have to be. It's not, it's such a crazy thing to really intellectualize the Mad Max world for a minute. And I'm not being cute, but dude, you want food. You can go to your phone and get an app and a guy can bring you a fucking quarter pounder. You lazy piece of shit. You can't even go to the McDonald's drive in you can have a guy bring nope. you. That's fucking crazy. And over here, you're thinking, okay, um, where's the water? Where do I eat? How do I pay for it? That's nuts, man. We can't even fathom this. Yeah. And that's why when we no, like that, the survival would override so much shit. So so much of the higher society bullshit would give way in seconds, just like this. Yeah. That's why Thunderdome makes sense like, to me. For 40 something minutes. Well, I, th I think that's something I always say too, is like, we're like, your, your kids are two, two meals away from you killing someone to feed them. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> how many groceries your are in your fridge? Start starving? How many canned goods do you have? <laughs> right. This isn't I have a, a few. I'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, we're going to Mad Max town. It's coming. Yeah. That's what I'm saying though. It's like at some point when this, when she, you know, we stop thinking about the higher functions of humanity when we have to do it with our base, our base needs. Mm -hmm. And that's a real thing. We are great. We are beautiful. We make beautiful things as humanity until we're hungry. Yeah. Until we are people are missing things that they need. Yeah, we our, do. Our needs are not met. <laughs> we make. Then we will kill our neighbors for it. We make the ninth symphony and then concentration camps. Exactly. You know, we're both terrible and beautiful. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Yeah. Look at the stories of like extreme famine and. Oh man. Russia. Parents killing their own kids to yeah. eat them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, and that's, and you got to be and a lot really of times, hungry. I've been pretty hungry, like pretty hungry before, but I was never like I want to cry. I've you know when you get hangry and you're like I will crack you in the head with a <laughs> pipe right now, and not, but not to eat you just because of the. So then take now add hunger to that anger, <laughs> like proper that's hunger. another couple days before you eat them. Yeah, <laughs> but would you eat them? I'd, I mean, I'd carve up a leg. I think. There's got to be cannibalism in this world. There has oh, to be. Oh, definitely. Yeah, has sure. to. Definitely. I'm surprised a movie that focuses on children for an hour didn't get into cannibalism. Yeah. <laughs> I Did you guys feel like this one had a little bit more of like a studio meddling? Like we're going to make a PG-13 version of this? I don't think so, of this? I don't think it did. That does bother me. We didn't even talk about that. I'm glad you brought it up. It is PG-13, which is a fucking bummer. But, um... Because the other two are R and they're so clearly R. And then we kind of bounce away. But I will say this, even though there's a little, it, you can feel a touch of silliness, right? A touch of silliness yeah. even in the beginning with Thunderdome. Um, although this is pretty awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. God, he says that. That's such a great quote. But um, so cool. it doesn't feel that goofy. Like I love the carnival barker, the Ayatollah of rock and roll. That's silly. He gets his fingers cut off. It's silly, but it's like apocalyptically silly, not a tonal shift silly. You know? Yeah, it's like a, a little bit absurd because like of how 
how harsh the life is otherwise. And they're just like making like when he loses his fingers, they just laugh at him. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they don't- yeah, there's the, the, the bad guys in the first two movies are weird. Like mm-hmm. there's not a lot of explanation as to why they behave the way they do. And I can imagine like had I saw that saw seen that as a kid, I would be like, disturbed. Like these people are strange. They they make me unnerved. Especially the part where they murder and rape people. Well, yeah, obviously that. But just like the weird l- behavior. And, and there's so little explaining. In this movie, they all they do is explain things. This is true. Right. <laughs> and uh, and none of the bad guys are... I mean, the grudge head is scarier than any of the yeah. other. Oh, man. You would want to see that fucker <laughs> if you open the shower curtain. <laughs> no, oh, dude. I, I, can you tell I, me, is Iron Bar... I can't remember the guy's name. You know his name, Scott. Angry Anderson. Is, is Angry Anderson a little person? No. no. Oh, he's just he's a short just, guy. I think he's just short. Oh, okay. I think he's just short. I didn't want to be disrespectful. But he was like a bodybuilder singer. No, I don't think oh, okay. so. And he, apparently he'd jam a pool cue up your ass if you weren't careful. I mean, what if I asked if, nicely? If that's what you think so. I mean, <laughs> depends. Depends. He, if he's he in the looks, right mood, you know? He looks like a little fella. A, uh, he's definitely short. He's definitely short. For a split second, I thought but, he was um, somebody from Willow, but he's not. <laughs> he's not that short shit no no he kind of looks like Burgo Cop yeah, a little bit I'm not making from, fun I'm just I, I, I'm mistaken is my point yeah he's he's a he's a shorter guy for sure but he's pretty he's been in good shape in this yeah, movie he looks great um did I tell you guys about how I used I used to have a reoccurring nightmare about Iron Bar <laughs> <laughs> how have oh, you yeah. buried this lead <laughs> tell your Iron uh, well, Bar got, story was, because after that I, we got a break weak. Okay, I was waiting for it. Um, I used to have nightmares that he would be in the closet, just the head thing, like the, the head with the long hair, and it would move back and forth. Oh God! Like, and like, and then the last one I had, I, I think I was like eighteen, and I still woke up scared out of my mind. It was I was looking out the window, and all of a sudden the head popped up with the hair, no. the face no. right in my face, and I'd wake up every time. It was terrifying, and it was Iron. And now, I love this movie. Yeah, the Iron Bar dude when he's like. <laughs> At the end of this, when he's on the railroad tracks and he's pushing that railroad cart with his arms and the hair is flopping actually back and forth. That's actually and hilarious. It's so funny. Scared. I cracked up laughing uncontrollably when I saw that. It's really silly. <laughs> it's scary, man. The way it's moving, I don't know what it is, but it, it freaked me out as a kid. I'm like, I don't want to watch as that. As a kid, Let's I could see it freaking that. you out. For, as an adult, I'm, we were sat on the couch. I burst out laughing. <laughs> It's absolutely, <laughs> it reminds me of some Looney Tune shit, like Wile E. Coyote is trying to chase the yeah. Roadrunner yeah. <laughs> before he gets TNT'd in the face. Oh, and shit. then he looks Hell like yeah. Justin Trudeau. Um, the uh, <laughs> That one time. Not all the time. <laughs> that one time. We all make mistakes. <laughs> um, but I think uh, I think it's time we're going to take a break. Oh, I have to run to the bathroom. Uh, yeah. A quick snack break. Not really. It'll be brief. And uh, we're going to talk about membership real quick. It'll be fast. It'll be brief. Um, but before that, a couple things. Uh, the review in question, since I know you're all dying to hear <laughs> yes. it. Um, what happened? Three stars. I've been following Dean and his various co-hosts for years from the last version of the show into this one and Kirking Off. Always fun and insightful, but the emphasis on membership has grown to be exclusionary. Yeah, membership is an exclusive perk for people who pay. It's always been exclusionary. Yes, there were almost always ads for membership, and yes, there were perks to after-show chat. But now they give a half a show and then tell you the the rest is for members only. I'm not sure they know they're being so blatant. We do. Case in point, recently they did episodes on Carrie and Pet Cemetery, perfect fodder for the show. Guess what they held off for for members and barely talked about on the episode? The kid coming back and killing people in Pet Cemetery and the prom in Carrie. Because they want people to pay for the privilege of talking about the climaxes of movies they're discussing. Um, That's factually incorrect. I think there's a lot of episodes that the beginning of the episode is better than the end of the episode. And I don't think everyone shares your sentiment, reviewer, that the best part to talk about is is the blood falling on her and Carrie. I think a lot of the conversation we had leading up to that was better than just like, oh yeah, and then the blood fall on her head. There's not a lot to talk about there. It just sort of happens. Tons of our discussions are front-loaded. We don't have scripts. We just kind of go through movies. This movie, all of the praise we have for this movie is now. The second half of this show is probably going to be us talking more shit about the movie for members only. 
but not because we think that's more compelling, just because that's the way it goes. Um, yeah. So we don't, we're not, in Pet Cemetery. I think, I think the beginning of the episode and the car crash and hitting the kid, that's all hilarious and funny. I think plenty of episodes, my point is plenty of episodes, I think the first half hour and 45 minutes are better than the entire is episode in total. In fact, the first half hour of the Superman members only, ironically, episode is phenomenal, I think. Um, some of our finer work recently. Um, we don't want you to pay for us to discuss the climax of the movie. That's just not, if you don't, if you're listening to us no. for years, how do you even think that dude? That's not what we're it's doing. It's not how we do it. No, we're, we're, yeah. we're giving over an hour of content for free. And then we're giving more content to people who pay. It's not, we don't plan, oh, this is the excellent, this is where we're going to really be good podcasters at the end. No, we just do our thing. There's no script here. Um, paying for the second half of an episode? No, thank you, he says. Oh, he also says this. I pay membership for a few podcasts. So he says, I pay membership for a few podcasts, and at the top he said he's been listening for years. So you never paid us. That's fine. That's your prerogative. But what are you bitching about if you pay other shows? And he writes in big caps for extra content. Well, yeah, we do extra content too. Every other week we do a bonus episode. And there's how many? Like 600? 600. 600 fucking episodes? That's not extra content. There is so much extra content and there always has been. Always. And there is all, there's yeah. more all the time. Yeah. It, it, and then he writes, no, thank you. I don't. And yes, this would have been five stars if not for this change. And I'm not going to, his name is, doesn't matter. I'm not, I don't, I, I don't want to throw shade at this guy because I normally don't care about this shit, but because it it's, has something to do with this change and because it sounds like he feels a way about it, he's going to feel a way about it no matter what I say. But I'm just telling him some of his feeling, some of his assumptions about my thinking are wrong. Yeah, this isn't meant yeah. to be calling anybody out, no. but just addressing the things that he's bringing up and the things that are just plain wrong because there is extra Correct. content. And I also, I caught on, what is after after show chat? I don't know what he's talking about. I don't about know there. what that is. I, yeah listened to for seven or eight years and I don't know what that is. <laughs> maybe he just a... means the app, maybe just means the after hour stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I that's, mean, that's what it is. We yeah. Just... But that's, th those are bonus episodes. That's yeah. a different thing. Yeah. yeah. To support creators, I like to, and get extra content. You are getting extra content. And whether you think this, whether you think the second half of an episode of extra content is extra content or not is really your philosophical, this, your, your prerogative. That's fine. And maybe we don't say it enough. And maybe I, I, so number one, thank you for voicing your discontent, discontent. Number two, I'm not upset with you and I'm not, th and I don't think you're a bad dude. You're fine. You support podcasts. That's fucking cool. I wish we were cool enough for you to support, but apparently we're not. And you've been quote following us for years. And the other thing too, like, I don't want to be a douche, but dude, like you've been following us for years and you finally review us just because you're upset. Why didn't you review us earlier when you loved us? If you've been listening for years, what's the Dude, fucking hold up? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's just kind of shitty. If, and look, we're out here fucking ho hoofing it, trying to do what we do. And look, I love that you support shows and that's awesome. And that's cool because a lot of people don't. And the fact that you do, that's fucking cool, man. And, uh, and if you're saying the content is five stars outside of this, then that's cool too. And I appreciate it. And look, no disrespect. We just see this a little bit differently. That's all. This, it, the whole change isn't to like bully anybody or be like, ha ha, you're not getting more content now. It's not. It's, it's so we can keep the show going. Yeah. We're it's trying to, free. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, this is a tough this thing is, to keep going. This is work what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. And it might not yes. seem like it is, yes. but we have commitments. We have time commitments. We come out here. We've been doing this a long, when you've been doing some shit for 10 years, you can charge for that shit. And I'm not even charging yeah. all the time for it. You, you still get plenty of free content. And there's how many episodes in this feed, bro? 200 and something. That's a ton of content you can listen to. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't, again, I don't want to beat the guy up too much. I get it. I don't want to be a bitch about it either, but I'm like, man, like if it's one thing, if somebody goes, Dean's a, a, a fucking asshole, racist, whatever. I'm like, you're just fucking stupid. You've never listened to the show. I don't care. I don't even address those, but this, because it was probably a little closer to what I think a mischaracterization of our intent that bothers me. Yes. You're, yeah. you're coming after my integrity. It's, I'm going to respond to that. That's all. But I appreciate the you, time you you're took. Seeing, I wish you would have taken it when you loved us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's shitty. Yes. Yeah, yeah, support the things you like. And if you don't- He does. He does. It, yeah, in his it, defense, it, that's he does. That's great. And if, you, if, you're, if something isn't for you, if you don't like it, then why 
why bother yeah. making it into such a huge deal? Yeah, just some people just, are just like us. Just walk away. I'm not <laughs> a dude. I, I'm sure this guy's awesome. I'm sure he fucking loves his kids if he has. I mean, he's a good dude. Like I'm, I probably fucking shake hands with him, have a beer with him. I, I'm not, I'm not coming at this dude. I'm just like, man, like fucking listen to yourself for just a minute. And, uh, and and then try to create something and make money on it. It's not easy, man. It's a fucking, it's rough. Yeah, and I, I understand yeah. not having that perspective because of I course. used to be the person who didn't have the perspective. If anybody wants to really like hear the both sides of like, right. <laughs> I've, I've lived through the, I was just a listener. I didn't mm-hmm. know what goes into producing a podcast and what kind of labor and effort it really, really is. Now I see the other, other side and yeah. I can tell you that it is not as simple as you think. Yeah, not if you're working full time. And that's what we do. We work no. all the time. And and I will say yeah. this, dude, like, like, let bygones be bygones. You want a free membership? Hit me up. And I'm not emboldening people to get, to send me bad reviews to get free memberships. I won't do that. But if you, if it's, if it's a, you pay for memberships already, if it's a principal thing, I'll give you a free trial. You want to check it out. Then you can see for yourself the free content. You know my email, dean at net or hosts at net. Either one I'll read. But uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's it's just yeah, that's it. Um, I do appreciate you taking the time. Um, three stars is still pretty good, but um, I'm not bitching about the stars. I'm just bitching about what you think the intent is to go ha ha nanny nanny boo boo. And <laughs> although there is a little bit of that because we do offer something for more, we're still. It's not like I'm putting out a 10 minute preview and going hey hey we do a podcast come pay for it. We're out here an hour and. I mean, we've been doing this for fucking 10 minutes, but over an hour of content every fucking week. Yeah. You get that. And you don't have to pay for shit. And you're still going to drop a shit review on us. That's sucky. Anyway, I'm done. That's my pitch for membership. There's plenty of shit out there, lsgmedia.net. That's lsgmedia.net. Plans start at five bucks a month. We have monthly plans, six month plans, one year plans. You name it. Can I bring up something? Please do. There is currently a vote going on for the next block. Thank you. And um, the members are going to get to determine what that's going to be. And what are the blocks? That's It's ours. That's our choices. Ours. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. It's Maja put together a block. I put together a block. And Scott put together a block of movies. And if you want to know more about yeah. that, uh, well, members know. And if you're a member listening to this, vote. You have an yeah, email. It's- you can get it on the Facebook group. You can get it on the Discord group. So if neither, if none of those three methods of contact work, then you're missing out on votes. You got to give us something. Um, yeah, and yeah. as of this release, I think the vote will still be up for a little bit. Not long. Though. Not long, but a little Johnny bit. Johnny moves yeah. quick sometimes. So yeah. if you miss it, you miss it. Mm-hmm. But um, all right, that's it. So yeah, man, I'm not trying to throw shade at you. I'm just much love. Thanks for listening for as long as you did. You listened for a few years. You listened to Kirking Off. That's cool, man. I appreciate you for that. I'm not trying to cut off my nose to spite my face, but I'm like, man, like it's not how you think it is. And the shit's not, not easy. And, and that's cool that you support other shows. If only when we were really cool and didn't make this annoying change, you would have considered supporting us for extra content. That would have been cool too, but you didn't. And that's okay. You do what you got to do with your money. There's plenty of shows I'm sure that you think are better than ours. And I'm sure there's plenty that are worse and you got to do what you got to do with your money. I support a couple shows and then I don't support every other show. So I get it. You have to be discriminatory in who you support. Yes. <laughs> Who run Town? That would be us. All right. Thank you guys so much. If you're a member, sit tight. We'll get back to it. If you're a non-member, we will see you in a week's time. Oh, fuck. Furiosa. Furiosa. Yeah, we're yeah. doing Furiosa next week. So yeah, next week yeah, for buddy. free, you'll get at least an hour of content of us discussing the new movie Furiosa, um, which will be wrapping up our Mad Max block. And uh, that's that. Awesome. So yeah, thank you guys so much. LSG Media. That's lsgmedia.net. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Members, don't go anywhere. We're coming back at you in a flash. Peace.